ビデオ Once upon a time, on a snowy Christmas Eve night in Tokyo, a 10 year old boy ducks into an alleyway to take a big steaming piss. While he's taking that big steaming piss, his ears perk up at the sound of a tiny meow. In the corner of his eye, he spots a tiny stray kitten. He takes the little furball back to his dad, who's waiting in the car, and asks if he could keep it like a typical 10 year old would. But before lectures on responsibility and subsequent begging can take place, a high tech military helicopter begins to bear down on the two. Turns out this is not your average father and son Christmas together. Oh no. These two are actually on the run from the father's former employer, Mishima Heavy Industries, for having stolen a state of the art android body for reasons we'll get into later. A madcap chase scene ensues, leading into a junkyard where the father, the son, and their new pet hide under some old cars. It appears at first that they are in the clear, but not before the copter pilot sprays some machine gun fire into their hiding place out of frustration. The father and the son emerge unscathed, but as for their new pet... <laughs> What's the matter, Renosuke buddy? Look! <sighs> I shouldn't have brought the cat with us! I, I, I... However, dear old dad has a plan. Rue, your dad is gonna give you the best Christmas present ever. <laughs> and that Christmas present turned out to be... purpose cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku, as its mouthful of a title would imply, centers around the life and foibles of a superpowered android with the brain of a cat who goes by the name Nuku Nuku. The original 1992 OVA is an adaptation of a one volume manga by noted manga creator Yuzo Takada. This one kind of looks like a redheaded stepchild when compared to Takada's other well known pieces like Blue Seed or 3x3 Eyes. Those manga are supernatural adventure stories, while Nuku Nuku falls into the realm of sci fi comedy. And how about that title, huh? That comically long title. All purpose cultural cat girl, Nuku Nuku. That title almost feels like it's begging you to judge the anime by its cover. It sounds like a parody of anime titles, ones that hack webcomic authors from the early 2000s would use as shorthand for the types of trashy anime they were vegging on day in and day out. And if you were one of the hypothetical people who took one look at this title, assume it was a bunch of trashy magical girlfriend pap in the vein of Ah My Goddess, and turned 360 degrees and walked away, then shame on you, because all-purpose cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku is nothing of the sort. When people say Nuku Nuku is a heartwarming story between a boy and his cat, they aren't just trying to be funny. There is actually a lot of heart and charm to Nuku Nuku, and there is certainly more to it than focusing on the antics of a cute robot girl who has the brain of a cat. What exactly is the heart and charm that comes out from all-purpose cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku? Well, let's take a look at the OVA and see for ourselves. Now, what exactly is all-purpose cultural cat girl Nuku Nuku about exactly? I mean, aside from the titular all-purpose cultural cat girl. Nuku Nuku's role in the original 1992 OVA is that of not just a pet, but also that of a protector figure and big sister figure to one Ryunosuke Natsume, the boy we saw in the opening. The central conflict of the plot is, believe it or not, a custody battle centered between Ryonosuke's father Kiyosaku, an absent-minded scientist, and Ryonosuke's mother Akiko, CEO of Japan's biggest military contractor, Mishima Heavy Industries. Kiyosaku, despite his laid-back demeanor, is a very principled man of science, who is on the run from Mishima Heavy Industries for both A, stealing an android prototype because he believes such technology would be used for immoral purposes in the hands of a military contractor, I mean, obviously, and B, taking Ryunosuke with him because he wants him to have a normal childhood and not be a cloistered rich kid. 
Akiko obviously does not take this well because one, her husband obliterated his NDA and stole company property, and two, she does not appreciate her husband throwing a wrench in her destiny as a helicopter parent. It won't allow Runosuke to go to that nasty beach! Don't you know that being an overprotective parent is detrimental to a young child's healthy development? But all in all, this conflict is just the backdrop to a semi-episodic series of adventures involving Nuku Nuku protecting her new family from Akiko's trigger-happy secretaries, as well as other android prototypes. And maybe, just maybe, making Ryunosuke happy by reuniting his estranged parents and putting an end to the world's wackiest divorce proceedings. Visually, the animation of Nuku Nuku is the element that best reflects the anime's overall silliness. The director of animation for this piece was none other than Yuji Moriyama, who retro anime fans might recognize as the animation director for most of the Project Aiko series. What made Project Aiko so memorable as a franchise was its knack for large-scale, well-animated set pieces that serve as both vehicles for exciting action sequences alongside farcical physical comedy bits. Nuku Nuku is no different. The most memorable scenes of Nuku Nuku are the ones that evoke images of Project Aiko. Happy-go-lucky scenes of comedic carnage and chaos that involves lots of madcap action and even more destruction. Scenes like in the first episode where Nuku Nuku tears through the city streets on her bike like a jet engine, or the climax of the fourth episode where Nuku Nuku and another android named Amy get into a fight and end up leveling a good chunk of the city. The scenes are memorable because they are exciting as well as absurdly funny. It also helps that these scenes are where a lot of the animation budget is allocated because we all know scenes of destruction are all the better when we can see every mechanical part flying off the wreck. A personal favorite scene from the OVA would be in the second episode where Nuku Nuku is being dragged down to the bottom of the ocean by a giant octopus mecha and the best way to free herself is to try and break through the cockpit window and flood the mech. Just look at how the water is animated in this scene. Another area where Moriyama really lets his talent shine is in the character animation. Sometimes it's used in the aforementioned well-animated bits to show off Nuku Nuku's athletic body in a way that's not too overly self-indulgent, but ultimately the character animation is best used in how it underlines the overall silly humor of the anime. In a series where half the cast is prone to emotional outbursts, it's pertinent to make sure those emotions come across loud and clear in comedically exaggerated ways. When a character is angry, their entire face has to be contorted in this cartoonish scowl. When a character is sad, they have to be a pathetic, sobbing mess. And Moriyama knows how and when to use these comedic expressions, and it not only makes the jokes funnier, but also snappier and well-paced. Which is good because Nuku Nuku is very much a character-driven comedy. I wouldn't call the characters deep or nuanced, but they're not just punching bags that serve the physical comedy. It's their personalities that make the comedy in Nuku Nuku work. For instance, Akiko's two secretaries, Arisa and Kyoko, are the biggest scene stealers in the anime. They are the prototypical Team Rocket. While it seems at first they might have your typical straight man, goofball duo dynamic going on, with Arisa being way too eager to test out the weaponry they've been given and poor Kyoko trying to rein her in, as the anime continues, it soon becomes apparent that their personalities and utter hatred for Nuku Nuku makes them the perfect incompetent henchmen. You almost don't even question why they would regularly do things that make you wonder why hasn't Akiko fired them yet, because it's funny how they are both a credible threat and yet two of the biggest losers on the planet. Hey Akiko, I wish to place one more thing in front of you. Well, what do you want? Would you please be so kind as to lend us some money? 5,000 yen would be plenty right now. Then you also have Amy, the secondary antagonist, who really succeeds at being both a deviously manipulative little imp, alongside being a tiny white hot ball of rage who wants to kill Nuku Nuku at all costs. Huh? What is that thing? Merry Christmas, you ancient android. Wow. But the big standout character in the series is, of course, Nuku Nuku herself. It's oil. Yeah, I could, uh. Hmm. Would you like for me to help you with that, Nuku? Yes? Please. <gasps> <laughs> Thank 
Nuku. Nuku Nuku is such a positive ray of sunshine that you honestly would have to be heartless to dislike her. She approaches every situation with a smile on her face and a song in her heart. She is a bundle of pure energy and everything about her from her personality to her superpowered antics to just her plain old adorableness never failed to put a smile on my face. This is helped immensely by the actresses playing Nuku Nuku in both the original Japanese and in the English dub. In the original, you've got the always reliable Megumi Hayashibara giving a performance that is both cute and cat-like. But, on the other hand, I gotta give it to Allison's Keith performance as Nuku Nuku. You're not supposed to buy food on the way home from school. I'm telling! Oh, 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 well, it's just that. <laughs> Do you want one, Rinosuke? Her voice is the perfect combination of sweet innocence and fun loving boisterousness that defines the character of Nuku Nuku. Keith's performance alone is kind of the reason why I prefer the English dub, even though the overall performances in the original Japanese have a lot more energy behind them. But one thing both performances nail is Nuku Nuku's determined devotion to her family. Nuku Nuku's personality can easily be summed up as putting the loyalty and love of a family pet into the body of a superhero. She's not just a source for awesome action scenes, but also the heart and soul of the story. This is best shown through her relationship with Ryonosuke. It's a relationship we don't see often in anime, the relationship between a boy and a big sister figure. Ryonosuke, are you really happy? Mm -hmm. Thanks to you, Nuku Nuku. <laughs> I'm happy too! We certainly see a lot of the opposite relationship of a boy and a little sister figure, perhaps a little too much. Will you stop? But big sister relationships are a rarity in anime, and Nuku Nuku does a good job of showing an idealized version of that type of relationship. Nuku Nuku is this protective, nurturing figure to Ryunosuke, and always desires to make him happy. Whether it's taking him and his friend Yoshimi to the beach, or getting a job so she can try to buy a new bike for him after accidentally breaking his, Nuku Nuku is always this cool big sis to her little brother. She's also the emotional rock Ryonosuke can turn to in the midst of his parents' messy estrangement. So, going back to the whole divorce plot line, I gotta say, for an anime about superpowered android cat girls fighting off giant mecha, Nuku Nuku handles the subject of divorce with a lot more maturity than one would think. Despite Akiko clearly being designated as an antagonist, there's really no good parent versus bad parent dynamic to be found in this anime. Kiyosaku and Akiko are just two flawed people trying to deal with the fallout of a failed marriage. Akiko, despite being a beloved smother trope and participating in some pretty underhanded tactics to get sole custody of Ryonosuke up to and including brainwashing his friend Yoshimi, genuinely loves Ryonosuke and it almost seems to be implied that her overprotective nature comes from her overcompensating for her lack of a traditional maternal skill set. She even grows as a character, such as when she has a chance to take full custody of Ryonosuke via exploiting a loophole she made in a verbal contract with Kiyosaku, and she chooses not to take it. From that point onward, she stops trying to actually kidnap Ryonosuke and tries to actually meet him and Nuku Nuku halfway. Kiyosaku, meanwhile, is certainly a cool dad who uses his knowledge as a scientist responsibly and can certainly keep a roof over Ryonosuke and Nuku Nuku's heads. But on the other hand, he does show signs of him being a lazy deadbeat who can barely take care of himself. There's the episode where Ryunosuke and Nuku Nuku try to reunite the two by having them play like a traditional Japanese household, and Kiyosaku cannot stop talking shit to Akiko's face. Akiko is making an honest-to-god effort to be a better mother despite her lack of skills and the indignity she's forced to endure, and it is certainly not held by her ex-husband laughing and rubbing the humiliation in her face. I know you want to see your family get back together, Ryonosuke, but there is a reason why this marriage failed in the first place. But I think both him and the anime realize that. Ryonosuke comes to the conclusion that while his parents love him very much, they do need some time apart from each other for now because they only seem to be happy with one another when they are actively trying to kill each other. But this is where the OVA's biggest problem comes in. 
the divorce conflict kind of, sort of, gets resolved by episode 3 in a 6 episode anime. So with the main conflict solved halfway through the OVA, this sort of leads to the latter half of the anime being a little unfocused. There does seem to be an attempt to introduce the android Amy as a new source of conflict, building up a sense of mystery surrounding who she is, what her motivation is, and why she's playing both sides of the conflict between Nuku Nuku and Mishima Heavy Industries. Truly, this could go somewhere for three episodes. Nope, it's all solved in one episode, and the next episode is devoted to Arisa and Kyoko trying to get Nuku Nuku fired from her job as a waitress. And when we see Amy again in the last episode, she's treated as nothing more than a nuisance, if anything. In fact, a lot of things in this anime get built up as huge in the grand scheme of things, but get dropped or underutilized. Like Ryunosuke's great-grandfather being the founder and head of Mishima Heavy Industries. At first he seemed like to be built up as this figure who's truly running MHI from the shadows, and that maybe he could be the true big bad of the OVA. Incidentally, you two, grandfather is really upset that you took Poison 1 without his permission. Huh? You're joking! But no, he gets revealed as a fun-loving old man in episode 3 who's there for some quick gags and is ultimately never used again outside of some lines of dialogue. But even with that lack of plot focus that makes Nuku Nuku feel more episodic in nature, the heart is still there. All-Purpose Cultural Cat Girl is just a fun, silly anime that's there to put a big dumb grin on your face. It revels in its ridiculous premise and just knows how to have fun with it in the most sincerest way possible. It's not a groundbreaking anime, but it's certainly one that leaves a feel-good impression on you. And perhaps, that could be enough for the Nuku Nuku franchise. And then, five years after the last OVA episode was released, something happened. So around late 1997, Studio Aishi decided, Hey, you know what we could bring back to the otaku masses? That anime about the all-purpose cultural cat girl named Nuku Nuku. Otakus like cute girls, and she's a cute girl who's also part robot and part cat. We'd be insane not to revive this dormant franchise. And so in 1998, Aishi brought back the Nuku Nuku franchise in a big way giving it a 14-episode TV series released in January, All-Purpose Cultural Cat Girl Nuku Nuku TV, as well as an OVA spin-off titled All-Purpose Cultural Cat Girl Nuku Nuku Dash. Now the first question we should be asking is... Why now? If there was a time to make a new Nuku Nuku anime, that time was five years ago, right around the time the last episode of the OVA got released, back when the Nuku Nuku iron was still hot. But in 1998, not only has that iron gotten significantly colder, now Nuku Nuku has to compete with the other big anime franchises that got released between 1993 and 1997 that were capturing the hearts and minds of otaku everywhere. If anything, they could have waited until 2002 and made a whole 10th anniversary anime. That would have made a lot more sense. But alas, I guess they figured that Nuku Nuku had enough name recognition alongside its otaku bait premise to warrant two anime release in the same year. As for the anime themselves, they are certainly... different than the OVA. Perhaps a little too different. And considering how the Nuku Nuku OVA is still held up as the best Nuku Nuku while the other two are seen as odd little outliers, sometimes different isn't a good thing. We'll save Nuku Nuku Dash for a future video because that anime is so diametrically opposed to the original foundation of Nuku Nuku, it seriously warrants its own video. Nuku Nuku TV, on the other hand, that's fair game. Welcome to Nuku Nuku TV. Enjoy the show! At first glance, you might think that Nuku Nuku TV is just the same as the original Nuku Nuku, just with a way lower budget. But then you actually watch the first episodes and soon the changes become all the clearer. First, a couple of characters are excised in the transition from OVA to TV. So, no Great Grandfather, no Yoshimi, and no Amy for some reason. Okay, so far so good. Next, Kyosuke and Akiko aren't divorced in this adaptation and are actually in a very stable, loving marriage. Okay, very different direction from the original, but one that still leaves the door open for different stories to be told. And lastly, Mishima Heavy Industries serves as the main antagonist of the series as an evil company run by Hell Mishima, who wishes to conquer the world through his various inventions with the help of his second-in-command, Bloody Akiko, aka Ryonosuke's mother. And the entire staff of the company dresses up like they are villains in a tokusatsu show. Hell Mishima, Black, Black Industry! Industry. 
Okay... The TV series has fundamentally taken an anime that was already silly in its own right and turned that silliness meter way, way up. While the original Nuku Nuku OVA was a perfect balance between action and comedy, Nuku Nuku TV is all comedy all the time. Which I guess I understand, the budget shown here doesn't really allow much in the way of cool action scenes. In fact, the show pretty much deliberately screws you out of potentially awesome battle scenes for yucks. What's that? Wait, I can't move my body at all! Plus, they really don't have enough to adapt from the original manga because the OVA pretty much did it all. In fact, they kind of acknowledge the fact that this whole series is just one big pile of non-canon adventures at the beginning of every episode. That's right folks, this is just an alternate, doofier version of Nuku Nuku. The real Nuku Nuku is still stuck in space waiting for a ride home. Just like her friend Mega Man Volnut. Why do you have to bring that up, Pop Nod Wounds? Being an episodic comedy, the focus is less on the family and more on Nuku Nuku going to high school and hijinks ensue. And this could have had a lot of promise because it's giving Nuku Nuku a whole new set of characters to interact with. We can only get so much mileage out of her interactions with Ryonosuke, so it should be fun to see how Nuku Nuku interacts with people her own... age? I don't know, how do we factor cat ears into this equation? However, the students that Nuku Nuku befriends and has regular interactions with are less characters and more of walking running gags. Most of these characters are completely one-dimensional, only defined by their reoccurring joke they do throughout the series. Some of them do have more depth than others, such as the bossy class rep Futaba, who Nuku Nuku sees as her best friend. Abby chan a strange washing machine is running after us. <laughs> Private talk is prohibited, Miss Nuku Nuku! And the snobby rich girl Chieko, who surprisingly gets the most episodes centered around her because she causes the most friction against Nuku Nuku's friendship. <laughs> giving her a helping handout. That's right, that's right! What Ms. Chaco says is right! <laughs> but then you have characters like the Hex Maniac Girl, or the Know-It-All Science Nerd, or the Bookworm Girl, whose shtick is that she's so absorbed in her books she doesn't say anything or do anything. And then you have Aichi, the aspiring folk singer who sings nearly every line of his dialogue in the same melody. All the other classmates shtick got old and annoying three episodes in, his got old and annoying halfway through episode one. Close down the club and give it money. I had nothing else to do, so I came to school. Miyazaki, you're not as cool as you think. You'll be discovered and become a pop idol. By the way, these running gags these characters share they make up more than half the jokes in this series. And this is indicative of a bigger problem Nuku Nuku TV has. Nuku Nuku TV has the look of what you would assume to be an absurd screwball comedy. What with the way the villains dress, and the absurd plot lines, and the wacky character personalities bouncing off each other to the chagrin of the show's designated straight man Ryanosuke. But it doesn't feel like a wacky screwball comedy because the pacing of the jokes are just too slow. How a joke is usually delivered in Nuku Nuku TV is that someone, usually Nuku Nuku, will say something or do something or bring a subject of a conversation up, and her schoolmates will respond to this by doing their various running gags, and the plot cannot move forward until everyone, and I mean everyone, gets their gag out of the way. Compounding this is the fact that the way these jokes are delivered feels so very stilted and rehearsed. There's very little energy behind how these jokes are delivered, and it makes the slow and padded comedy feel almost glacial. Cold, it's, it's too cold. Even old man Zenzaburu Matsui of Togoshi Ginzu wouldn't say such a joke this bad nowadays. Oh, this cold temperature feels so good. Compare this to another comedy anime that came out that same year, Excel Saga. That anime is far more well remembered and well regarded because the jokes are snappier and well paced, the delivery is more energetic, and whenever they have a running gag they know how to put a new spin on it so the joke can always feel fresh. Nuku Nuku TV feels like a show that had just the barest amount of 
effort put into it. Like, it feels like the staff just wrote down some gags, drew some character designs for said gags, and decided, great, that's half our series done, right there. All that being said, I don't think this anime is entirely unsalvageable. There are some bright spots in this sea of repetitive jokes and slow pacing. The biggest one being, obviously, Nuku Nuku herself. Nuku Nuku is still the cheery, perky android cat cutie she was in the OVA, and her presence alone brings a lot of energy to this anime that sorely needs it. There are so many scenes that Nuku Nuku just carries alone because her default personality matches the zany tone the anime is so trying to desperately shoot for. I can say without hyperbole that without Nuku Nuku, this anime would have been completely unsalvageable. There are also some standout episodes that I actually found myself enjoying. For instance, there's the musical episode centered around Nuku Nuku and friends shooting a student film, and it ends with a payoff to one of the many running gags that's executed in a pretty clever way, and I dare not spoil it here. There's also the episode where Nuku Nuku's accident-prone homeroom teacher becomes involved in a star romance with a sexy alien mouse named Michi Michi. I love you! Michi Michi has fallen in love with you! Out of all the episodes in this entire series, this was the one I've got the most enjoyment out of. Don't know why I did though. By the way, artists, if you're watching this video, please give me Michi Michi fan art. There is like zero out there and I am jonesing bad. I need it now, damn it. Now, 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 now. But quite possibly the best episode is the one that gets back to the true heart of the Nuku Nuku franchise. Nuku Nuku's relationship with Ryonosuke. First, some preamble. I did talk about how this anime's goal was to focus less on Nuku Nuku's relationship with her family and more on how Nuku Nuku would deal with having a group of friends. And boy did they really want to downplay the familial aspect of the Nuku Nuku franchise in this anime because even though the family's a lot more stable in this OVA, the relationships within the family feel a lot less, well, familial. I don't even think Ryonosuke or Nuku Nuku even call Akiko and Kiyosuke mom and dad in this anime and I guess that's supposed to be a joke? But I think around the halfway point, the writers realized they couldn't stay away from the family aspect for too long, and a couple of episodes are devoted to Nuku Nuku's relationship with her family. There's an episode devoted to Nuku Nuku and Ryonosuke getting involved in a Back to the Future plot, where they end up back in the past accidentally and have to make sure their parents fall in love to prevent future consequences. This plot has some potential, but I don't think they really make the most of it just because of how un focus it all feels. Then there's a New Year's episode where, thanks to a misunderstanding, Nuku Nuku thinks her family has abandoned her. It certainly has some emotional moments, and it truly explores how much the Natsumes mean to Nuku Nuku, but it's ultimately kept off my top episodes list, thanks to a lengthy montage sequence where Nuku Nuku sees her friends celebrating New Year's with their families that goes on forever. But then we have that episode with Ryonosuke I've been teasing for the past few minutes or so. And the question I'm sure you are all asking is, why is this one the best? Well, it starts off with Ryonosuke getting mad at Nuku Nuku for ruining a video game he had been playing for hours because, big sister figure or not, she's still a stupid cat prone to stupid cat things. Even though you're in the body of a human being, you're still nothing more than a cat after all! You'll never become fully human if you continue to act like this! While stewing in his room, Ryonosuke decides to drink some energy drink as a snack, which ultimately turns him into a pink alligator. Long story there, Mishima Industries' new invention recall order went out too late, so bear with me here. Anyway, Ryonosuke is kicked out of the house because alligators are scary, and he is then besieged by the various cast members who want to attack him, capture him, or just annoy him to death. Alligator, la 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 la, alligator, don't! After a lengthy chase scene full of repeated footage, Ryonosuke finds himself in an alleyway alone and scared because nobody believes he's actually Ryonosuke, and that he is essentially stuck as a pink alligator forever. That is, until... Mr. Ryonosuke? Do you understand that I'm Ryonosuke? Why are you staring at me with that strange look upon your face? Ah! I'm sorry! When I take a walk, I usually like to walk on the fence. <laughs> Nuku Nuku immediately recognizes him and tries her best to cheer Ryunosuke up. She cheerfully reminds him that things could be worse, gives him her coat to keep him warm, and swears that she will do everything in her power to get him back to normal, doing everything a nurturing big sister would. 
Ryunosuke is overcome with tears and apologizes profusely to Nuku Nuku for getting mad at her. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! <laughs> Miss you, Anyways, to skip ahead a bit, some more chases ensue, and through a series of sheer coincidences, Ryunosuke gets turned back into a human. He wakes up initially thinking it was all a dream, but soon finds out that he's wearing Nuku Nuku's jacket, and realizes it wasn't a dream. Nuku Nuku really did help him and protect him even though he was an unrecognizable pink alligator. It's moments like these that shows us the strength of the loving bond between Ryonosuke and Nuku Nuku, and they really are the closest the TV series gets to the OVA in terms of the heartfelt writing. Almost makes it worth slogging through all those unfunny jokes just to get to moments like these. Do these moments make all-purpose cultural catgirl Nuku Nuku TV worth sitting through for all 14 episodes? Mmm, not really, no. Look, if you really want to get into Nuku Nuku, your best shot is the original OVA. It's an excellent example of solid 90s anime goodness. Equal parts funny, action packed, and heartwarming. It's probably the coziest action anime you'll ever lay your eyes on, having the qualities of a Saturday morning cartoon and a cozy feel good Sunday afternoon. It is without a doubt a hearty recommendation if you're in the mood for some easily digestible silliness. Nuku Nuku TV, on the other hand, is an anime that's attempting to double the wackiness of the original product and falling short. And while there are some salvageable bits that made me feel like I didn't completely waste my Sunday watching it, it's an anime that honestly feels a little too lazy to fully engage its audience with its barely there budget, sluggish humor, and over-reliance of repetitive running gags. I won't try to steer you away from it, you may be curious to see if it's really that lazy as I'm saying it is, but just be prepared to hear a lot of the same punchlines being repeated over and over and over again. As for the Nuku Nuku franchise as a whole, we can't really make final judgement on that just yet. Remember, we still have Nuku Nuku Dash to go over, but as I said before, that's for another day. For now... Let's just soak in the good feelings that was given to us through a heartwarming story between a boy and his cats.